Hey guys, welcome back to another Default Cube CG Matter tutorial, and today we are taking a quick break from the procedural node series. I know that is painful, but we are doing something equally cool while I wait for my new microphone, and that is, if I can switch screens, and that is making uh, objects, like, you know, we take a torus and then we turn it into a woven torus. And same thing for a cylinder, and this works for any general mesh, although it works best with uh, meshes that have, you know, nice curvature that aren't sharp. So it wouldn't look too nice on a cube, but it does work. And yeah, we're gonna show how to make this kind of stuff because if you're to model it by hand, it would take absolutely forever and you don't want to use like materials for displacement necessarily uh, when you have a solution like this. And before we actually get into it, I just want to talk about the general idea of how this works because this could look crazy uh, to people who have not seen this technique before. I mean, look at all this geometry. And that'd be really complicated to model by hand. Well, really, all I've done here is I've taken a base object, which has some geometry. It's an all-quad mesh, which is pretty important. And then I made a woven tile. So what you want to think about this as is I've taken this and put it on every single face so that, you know, I'm basically copying this on a per-face level and then just connected them to turn it into this. So if I was to take this and subdivide it to give it more geometry, it would look the same, but just have like a denser woven to it. It would be more, it would have more uh, intersections and all that, but it would still work. So yeah, let me, let me show you how to do that. We'll start a new Blender project. And really what we're going to be using is a specific add-on that I feel like nobody talks about. It's built in. You go to edit, preferences, add-ons, and then you're going to type in tissue. And then if this isn't enabled for you, make sure to enable the tissue add-on because that is what we're going to be using. That is the add-on that lets you take something and put it on another mesh on a per face level. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna start off by making the maybe woven torus because I like that example. So let's do a nice torus and we're not gonna mess with any like divisions. Like we're not gonna subdivide it yet, um, but I'll, I'll show you that it does work. So let's just put that to the side. And like I said, all we really need to do is just make a single woven tile and then we're gonna use the tissue add on to do all the magic. So let's do some basic modeling. I'm gonna add a plane. And I just want to warn you, I'm pretty bad at modeling. So if you feel the same way, I got your back. Um, I'm going to try to make it uh, the least amount of complicated it needs to be because this is probably the hardest part of the tutorial. Okay, let's see how we do it. So what I like to do for the woven towel is you need to kind of have two, I don't know, leather strands going this way and then two going this way, but they need to go over, under, over, under. So it's kind of like you have sine waves. It, it gets pretty confusing. So I'm going to go into edit mode. Now I'm going to go into edit mode. I like to subdivide this by, I think, three. Yes. You can do more, so you can have it go up and up and below a bunch of times, but you want to do it the minimum number of times because you're just tiling it, so you don't need to, you know, have a lot of detail in this. This just needs to be the basic unit of your weaving. Okay. So I like to take this strand and this strand and just delete them in terms of faces. So we only have uh, two strands going horizontally. And to turn these into sine waves, I'm going to select this face and this face, so kind of like alternating faces, and bring them up by, let's say, 0.1. You could do 0.2. It's just going to be like the amplitude of your wave. Then I'm going to select the pair of these, so like the, I, I, I don't know what the word, the complement maybe. So I'm going to select this one and this one and bring them downwards by the same amount, just negative. So I did 0.1, now I'm going to do negative 0.1. Boom, we have our basic sine wave but you're gonna notice that we want this to be seamless because again, we're making one tile that's gonna be tiled. So there uh, should be no seams if we want this to work correctly. And you can see from the side view that this starts from below the uh, ground plane and then it ends on the ground plane. So to fix this, we need to make sure that we select this uh, edge over here and bring it up by 0.1. And then this edge we can we can have this one end up uh, higher than the ground plane. So for this one, we're also gonna bring it up by 0.1. And let's go to the side view again, just to see what's going on. So for this one, it starts at ground plane, does its sine wave, ends at ground plane. This one starts above, does its thing, ends above. So that is seamless, so that works. Okay, now we need to make the other strands going the other way that kind of weave through it. And the way I like to do that is I'm gonna select everything, Shift D to duplicate, and then I'm gonna rotate this by 90 degrees. And notice that we duplicated the faces, not the objects. So we still have a single plane object, not uh, two. Although you could do the other way and then join them, that's fine too. 
Okay, so they're already kind of weaving, but we want to really uh, make sure they're weaving properly. So this area that's um, high up should be overlapping, I don't know, with something a bit nicer. And I'm trying to think what would make sense. So we can move these on the x-axis uh, this way by, let's say, let's say minus 0.25. And then we would want to bring this a bit to the left so that there's no intersection. So on the y-axis, I'm going to move these by 0.25. Okay, cool. So this way, I think we have something that makes sense. So we have a high tile uh, above a low tile. And generally, there aren't any intersections, it doesn't look like. And then to make these a bit smoother, because right now it looks uh, super jagged, we can just select everything in terms of uh, edges, and then control B to bevel. And we're just going to bevel a lot and use our scroll wheel. And make sure uh, if you do it this way, you're going to get some self intersection hit C uh, for clamp, I think. And that way, you know, your bevel makes sense. And then that should already look a bit better. We can make this a shade smooth. And just in case our clamping went all the way to the edges, so we have like two edges on the exact same point, we're just going to select everything and then do a merge by distance, which luckily I already typed. And you can see it already removed eight vertices. So there must have been um, four pair, no, two pairs. I don't know. There's some edges that were overlapping. There we go. So at this point, we can already do our take our tile and put it on this um, operation with the tissue add on. But uh, you can see the gaps between these uh, strands is pretty big. So if we did this right now, it would look like a very sparse uh, woven torus, which is fine. But if we want something a bit uh, thicker, like thicker strands, uh, we can just do, uh, fix that by editing the thickness of these strands. I think it's pretty obvious. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select uh, this strand, at least the side of it, and we're just going to move it by, let's say, 0.1. And then we have to do the same thing for these others if we want them to be the same uh, thickness. But again, you don't need to as long as it's tileable. And then we're going to do the same thing for this. So this is 0.1. And then over here is 0.1. So now we have basically the same pattern. Nothing's intersecting. You see it actually looks pretty nice from uh, below but it's also thicker. Okay, cool. So once you've enabled the tissue add-on, the next step is you're gonna hit N uh, for these uh, properties, and you are gonna go to edit, because for some reason it doesn't call itself tissue, like the face builder add-on's called face builder, screencast keys, the screencast, screencast keys, uh, but this one's just called edit, at least for me, maybe I need to update, and you're gonna see tissue tools, uh, which have a bunch of stuff, but we're just gonna be using tessellate, which is gonna tessellate our tile along the target object. So select your tile, shift click the object. So you have both of these selected, but this is the active object. So select shift click, and then hit tessellate. And we have a bunch of options here, which um, some of these we actually need to change, but I'm going to start off by not changing anything and show you what happens. So we're just going to click OK. And you can see we get a new object, we still have our plane, which is you know, the tile, the original torus, but now we also have this tessellation. And we're just going to move this over. And you can see, like, in theory, like, just kind of the idea of it does work. And you can see that um, the tiles actually connect together, but you're seeing some weird shading, probably. Like, it kind of looks like there are sharp edges over here, for example. And the reason is, basically, we have adjacent tiles. So, again, each um, face is going to get our woven tile, and the adjacent ones are connecting in the right place because we made it seamless, but they're not actually merged in terms of geometry. So, I think if I'm just uh, to hover over an area and click L, it's only going to select uh, this strand, this segment of a strand, instead of doing the whole thing in a circle. So it's not actually connected to, let's say, this strand. These aren't actually connected. And we can fix that pretty easily by just selecting everything. And again, uh, we'll do a merge by distance command. And you can see it removed like 4,608 vertices, which means uh, that's how many uh, tiles we have or something like that. That's the reason why there's a lot of them. And already, uh, now we have one piece of geometry. So if I click L, you can see it selects the whole strand going around, but it still looks a bit weird. And that's just because we need to change this to smooth shading. And that's already looking a bit better. We can do other stuff to it, but that's just the basic thing we need to do. So instead of doing all that, so really all we did is merge by distance and shade smooth. What we can do is again, select, shift click, 
test await, and then this time, instead of just clicking OK, here are all our settings. We can enable merge, and we can also enable smooth shading, which are the two things we needed to do. And, and then for this merge, we can choose a distance for uh, to check if two, if two vertices are within that distance threshold, they're going to be connected. So just keep it at zero, which is really just 0 0.0001, which means they have to be pretty much touching each other for it to work. So just enable these two, click OK. And now we have the same kind of setup as before, but you're going to notice that, first of all, we can select a strand, and that works for both um, horizontal and vertical, right? And the shading looks pretty smooth. Now to make this look a bit better, uh, now that we have this set up, what I like to do is actually give these thickness, because right now they're like infinitely thin points. Uh, so what I like to do is I like to, let's see, we're going to go to modifiers, and we're going to add a, we're going to add a solidify, which is going to give a thickness, it's going to solidify each uh, strand. And it's working, you can tell it has thickness, but it kind of looks like uh, putty or something, it looks weirdly shaded again. And to fix that, just go to the object, yeah, object data properties, go to normals, and we are going to enable auto smooth. And you're probably going to have to play around with this angle number depending on what your object is. So for a sphere, 30 might work. For a torus, which might have a bit sharper curvature at some points, we're going to need something like 45 maybe. Nope, 55, there you go. So you can see just smoothed over those connection points. So you just need to find the minimum angle that works for you. You want to try not to make this number too high because then it's going to actually smooth over the solidify part of this. So you can see now we have a nicely solidified thing and we have, I, I don't want to say procedural control, but we have control over the uh, thickness of this, which is pretty cool. And then we can add other kinds of modifiers like bevel modifiers and everything. I, I'm going to probably not mess around with that just in case it like, crashes Blender because there's too much geometry. But that is the basic workflow. And again, if you want the gap between these like woven strands to be smaller, that just means our target uh, needs to be needs to have like thicker strands. And the cool thing about the tissue add-on, also, I need to find the I think it's in the object properties. In one of these panels, we have uh, more control over the uh, tissue stuff. So I just need to remember where it is. So I guess it's here. It's in the object data properties. You can see tissue tessellate, and then we need to select the tessellated object. And then you're going to see we have a bunch of uh, stuff. So again, go here, select the object we made. And then you're going to see some extra settings that weren't available for us with the uh, tissue thing when we actually hit tessellate. And one of those is animatable, which I'm going to enable. And I believe what this lets us do is, let's see. So here's our target object. We're going to move this up. And that's not updating. Am I going crazy? We need to hit refresh. Yeah, there you go. So we hit refresh and now you're seeing that this is actually updated. Again, taking our woven tile, putting it on the target object, etc. Now, of course, that looks pretty bad, but you can actually do something that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to uh, select this loop and we're going to enable proportional editing. So I'm just going to bring this down in a nice smooth manner. So something like that. So it still kind of looks pretty smooth. And then we just need to refresh again. And you could do that. Now, I'm not sure if we can do this live without hitting refresh every time, but I'm sure you can make a script that goes frame by frame refreshing, and then you could uh, render out an animation. But that's the cool thing about this uh, approach is that it's deformable in that sense. And there's a lot of other stuff we can do, like the iteration count, wherever that is. We wouldn't want to do that in this case, but that is another cool feature. So again, all we have to do is I'm now going to show, show you the method on a different object with a nice curvature. And then I'll show you like what happens when you pick a monkey or something. So I'm going to pick a cylinder with the bottom and uh, the caps are deleted. And then right now, if we were to do this, notice that there aren't that many faces. It's like one face per vertical slice. We can still do the tessellation, but it's going to look extremely weird because it's stretching out our tile. So instead, you can just add some loop cuts. And this is showing that the geometry of this affects the result. And now you have something that looks a lot better. Again, you need to do the whole solidify approach we were talking about. And then also, for this one, we might need a smaller auto smooth number. So 0.3, or sorry, 30 degrees doesn't seem to work. We need something a bit higher. And this kind of works at 35. I'm just going to choose 40. Remember, the torus needed 50 or something. 
But yeah, that's the cool thing about this. Um, again, I'm gonna enable animatable. And then for this one, we're gonna add a subdivision. And then we just hit refresh. And what do you expect to happen? You see it basically made our uh, tessellation more dense because there's more faces to copy this onto. And then lastly, before we wrap up this video, I guess I should just show you, uh, just show you what happens when you mess with the monkey. I don't know, I keep switching cameras. Um, is this correct? There we go. Uh, we need to show you what happens when you have very sharp uh, angles between faces. So I'm gonna choose the monkey. And what I want you to notice, there's a couple things that are worse about this than the torus and the cylinder. Uh, you can see that there's some very sharp um, angles between faces because this is pretty low poly. And then also something that's gonna look pretty bad is this triangle fan. Uh, this isn't a quad, uh, quad geometry topology and it's all converging at one point on these uh, eyes over here. So I'm saying this is the trouble area. And let me show you what happens. So again, uh, woven tile, target object, tessellate, click okay. And you can see it pretty much does what we expect. Like it looks pretty good. Of course we need to solidify and all that stuff. But um, you can see it's kind of looking pretty harsh. Like it's not really connecting on these um, very sharp areas. And you can change some of the tessellation settings to maybe make that better. But then also it's looking really janky on this triangle fan area. But overall, in other areas, it looks pretty okay. And maybe to make it look better, again, this is a pretty broken example. But if, if we had the solidify and then choose a auto smooth angle of like, I don't know, 45 or something. Some of these areas are redeemable. So really what you wanna do is you want to, before you do any of that stuff, is you just wanna throw on a um, subsurf right there. So now it's a bit smoother and it's not gonna fix everything. Again, we do have the triangle fan or at least a subdivided triangle fan that still has some pretty weird geometry. But you can see that this version uh, looks a lot smoother and there's less breaking. There's still a bit of breaking, but it's a bit better. So there you go, I think that's everything I have to say about the uh, woven tile process. Of course, there's more to talk about, about making this actually look like a woven basket instead of just having the geometry of one. And maybe I'll do that as a CG Matter tutorial, but hopefully you enjoyed this uh, this little roundabout into the tissue add-on. Um, I'm gonna be continuing the procedural node stuff. I was just taking a quick break uh, because I ordered a headset with a microphone that I wanna try out for the rest of it, so I don't wanna record uh, any more yet, probably. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed this tutorial, the best way, the only way, the way I want you to support me is via Patreon, because likes, subscriptions, all that don't necessarily help fund um, more tutorials in the future. So if you like this stuff, and you want some behind the scenes access, whatever, if you just wanna help me out, uh, Patreon is the way to do it, and I wanna thank all, there's something like 200 uh, patrons that are already there, so thank you. Um, that's it, that's all I, that's the end of the show, boys. Thanks for watching.